What's up guys, this is Jan for Chess24. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the game between Veselin Topalov and Levan Aronian, third round of the candidates tournament in Moscow, where the challenger for Magnus Carlsen's next world championship match is to be found. And Veselin Topalov, the former world champion, had a pretty rocky start into the tournament, lost in the first round after missing some good chances to Vichy Anand, then made an easy draw with Black against Peter Svidler. And this is his first white game. He's facing Levon Aronian, the Armenian superstar, who started quietly with two draws, was slightly better in one, slightly worse in the other. Nothing too exciting yet. And there's been a lot of speculation about Levon's chances, or anybody's chances, but especially Levon's in this tournament. He was the favorite, or one of the favorite, in two or three of the previous candidate tournaments, never quite made it to a world championship match. And now that he's lost the position as number two in the world, some people say he might have a little less pressure and maybe this is the time without all the attention on him. We shall see. Topalov certainly wants to use the white pieces to get back into the rice. And he opens with a move one C4. Not his main move, but as all these top players, he can do anything. And already we, in the first two moves, we see a nice little opening dance one knight f6, knight c3, and e5. Now, you might ask yourself, if black wants to play with e5, why doesn't he do it on the first move? Why give white the chance to go knight f3 and prevent it now? The reason, I know I've explained this in an earlier video, but I'll do it again, is that if white, if black goes e5 instantly, then white can play g3, and after knight f6, go bishop to g2, when it's not really possible to play systems based on bishop b4 tackling the knight on c3 because there is no knight on c3 yet. Therefore, black waits for the white knight to commit to c3 and after knight c3 he goes e5. Now if white tries to outsmart his opponent, goes g3 saying, I know you want to play an e5 system, then I go bishop g2, then black would most likely change gears and play a move like c6. And this system with c6 and d5 is extremely solid against the bishop on g2. Therefore, most white players don't go for it in this move order. So, knight f6, knight c3, e5. Now we're back to normal territory. Knight to f3, knight c6. The, I don't know what's called. Four knights of the English opening. g3 is the main move here to Fianchetto, the bishop. And we see which system Levon chooses. He goes for the move bishop b4, which really explains his first move. If he were to play a system with d5, there's no need for subtleties like one knight to f6. Bishop b4 is a line Aronia is very familiar with, but mainly from the other side of the board. He's had some battles here with white against the likes of Vichy Anand. Bishop to g2 is the main move and black castles kingside. It's a pretty flexible setup for black and some lines he wants to take on c3. Some lines he wants to push his e-pawn up the board. The main line that has been discussed recently amongst others between Aronian and Anna is the move short castles when typically black goes e4, knight to g5, attacking this guy three times. Therefore, you have to eliminate one of the attackers by going bishop c3, bc3, rook e8. Now white wants to bring his knight back, goes f3. Here there is a move e3 which was played in some old Kasparov Karpov games, but the latest trend is to just take on f3, knight takes f3 and d5. This is a position of a game between Aronia and Anand, which ended peacefully after d4, d takes c4. Now Topalov had something else in mind. He plays a bit of a sideline in this position. Not an unknown move, but not the most popular one. The move knight to d5, which leads to a different nature of the play. Black immediately faces a very important decision. Does he want to allow knight takes b4? Does he want to try to use this loss of time or does he want to play it solidly? The most solid move is the move bishop to c5, just withdrawing from the attack and after something like castles, d6, d3, play typically continues like this when the position is rather quiet. You could argue that white has a tiny advantage, but it's certainly a playable line for black. Aronian, however, certainly showed up prepared for this move knight d5 and he goes for a sharper continuation, the move e4. He's saying, what are you doing? You didn't castle yet. I'll go e4, attack your knight and see what you do. First thing to notice is that e4 stops the positional threat of knight takes b4. 
because black has the double zwischenzug e takes f3, knight takes c6 and f takes g2 and black wins material because this would become a new queen. <clears throat> the second point of e4 is that you can't go knight g5 as in the other line we've seen because after knight takes d5 this knight is now hanging and after cd queen g5 black is already better. Therefore not a lot of choice for white, his knight has to go to the rim to h4 because knight g1 is just too frustrating and this position of the knight on h4 is a key factor in a lot of what's to follow because in many lines you have to be very careful about g5 picking it up. Of course knight h4 has a direct threat which is knight takes f6 followed by bishop takes e4 but it turns out that black can ignore that threat and that's what Aronian does by playing the move d6. Now grabbing the pawn is not such a great idea because after knight f6, queen f6, bishop takes e4, white has lost too much time. His king is still in the center, his pieces are a bit all over the place and after rook e8, bishop to g2 let's say, bishop to g4, black develops a very strong initiative and you can already tell this is not gonna turn out well for white. Knight f3 for example runs into a nasty little pin. So grabbing the pawn is not a great idea, therefore white has to do something else. One line that's been disputed mainly in correspondence chess I believe is the move short castles here which does allow g5 winning a piece. This isn't the end of story, you could analyze this position forever. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna point out that I believe this line is supposed to be fine for black continues with d4 with the point of g takes h4, bishop to g5, but black goes h6, not so much to cover this pawn, but to cover the g5 square and to now threaten the move gh4. And here there have been some crazy games like this. Hmm. But as far as I can tell, black is doing quite all right here. The white attack is not decisive. Palov does not want to go for this, especially since he's clearly dealing with a prepared opponent else he would not go for e4 followed by d6. He plays the other sensible move in the position he grabs the bishop on b4. Now after knight takes b4 the threat of g5 is still an element that determines the rest of the play. d3 is a move you would like to play but that runs into e takes d3 and with white being forced to recapture with the e pawn he has his problem on the e-file his king is not out of the center yet, black would immediately develop an initiative. So that's not a good idea, therefore you have to start by playing a3, chasing this knight back, knight c6 and now play d3 which is what Topalov did. You could also go d4, also controlling this square, but then you're not really fighting for a return ticket of this knight that is stuck on h4 and after d4, d5 black has a very comfortable position. Therefore d3 is a critical move. Aronian, clearly knowing what he's doing here, answers it with the very direct move d5. Tending to fight for his pawn on e4 after d takes e4, d takes e4. Once again this knight remains on the rim. Not a pleasant position for white. Topalov instead decided to castle. c takes d5 also wasn't that great. Queen takes d5 and black is very active. Even though I believe this is a serious alternative to the move castles. Of castles and here Aronian deviates from a correspondence game played earlier in this position where d takes c4 was played. That's the computer's favorite but I don't like this move and I'm not surprised that Aronian didn't go for it because after d takes e4 not only is this knight free again, white also has a mass of pawns on the king side that kept, could potentially cause trouble even though I'm not sure black is worse here, the computer says it's fine. I don't like it one bit and I like Aronian's move much better. He goes for the move e takes d3, asking white how he wants to clarify the situation in the center. If white goes e takes d3, then black can develop very very quickly with bishop g4, which pretty much negates the advantage white has because of the two bishops. Black is just too active here. White is probably not worse, but it's not what you would expect from a vessel in Topalov playing for an advantage. c takes d5 is another option. Black has a Zwischenzug, d takes e2, queen takes e2, knight takes d5. Black is a pawn up, nothing too bad is happening to him immediately. But after let's say rook d1, bishop e6, 
for example f4. White has fair compensation for the pawn, he's threatening f5, he does have the two bishops on the open board, therefore this strikes me as quite a playable position for white. Topalov went for a third option though, he went for queen takes d3, the most natural move, but this also includes a pawn sacrifice, because now black has a knight fork, knight to e5, picking up the c4 pawn. White queen went to d4, most normal move, occupying this diagonal. You could make a case for the more humble queen to c2 as well, because we're gonna see later in some lines the queen can be a little exposed on d4, when after knight takes c4, e4, bishop e6. Once again, it looks like white has fair compensation for the pawn, but no more than that. <clears throat> Instead, Topalov went to d4, Aronian grabbed the pawn, and Topalov immediately tried to undermine the black center by going e4. Bishop g5 might look tempting, but it doesn't accomplish that much. Black just goes bishop e6, and bishop takes f6 is not really a threat, because all these endgames with black, who is a pawn up, are very comfortable for him. Therefore, e4, more principled move, Aronian goes bishop e6, developing and defending the pawn on d5 in order to meet e takes d with bishop takes d5. And now Topalov has nothing better than the move he plays, the move b3, trying to kick this knight away from its nice square on c4. Aronian plays the most normal move, knight a5, goes to the rim but attacking b3 and also planning to retreat to c6 with tempo if needed. Computer is strongly arguing that c5 was very strong here as well, queen takes c5 and now knight a5, but that's not something a human would do. Why would you give this pawn up if you can have the same with the pawn still on c7? There is good reasons for it, as usual with computer moves, rook c8 comes in handy once in a while, d takes e4 is on the agenda, and the queen cannot defend this pawn with the gain of tempo, as in the game after queen c3 or the move played queen to a4. So c5 was very interesting, but Aronian chooses the human move, knight to a5, and Topalov went for queen a4. I thought queen c3 was a little more natural, trying to stay on this long diagonal, when after, once again, the most natural move, knight c6, bishop b2, it looks to me like white still has decent compensation for the pawn. d takes e4 can be met with bishop takes e4, either immediately or after rook d1, and this knight can't take here. Well, the two bishops on such an open board tend to be enough compensation for one pawn. Topalov probably disliked that after queen c3, knight c6, too many arrows, I'm sorry. Black can go d4 with tempo, even though this position, once again, white has some attacking potential. I'm not 100% sure how it should be evaluated, but Topalov tried to do better than that by putting his queen on a4. The knight retreats to c6, once again, the natural move, and here we've already arrived at a decisive moment for this game. Topalov plays perfectly natural move, the move rook to d1, pinning this pawn, putting extra pressure, but it turns out this is a very serious mistake. What he should have done instead is... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why do people always call me when I'm doing my videos? Doing no calls all day and during a video. I was just talking about e d5 and the phone rings. Anyway, what he should have done is take on d5 when bishop takes d5 is a little awkward because of this pin. So probably you want to take with the knight instead so this bishop continues to have a grip on that square and also they so they have knight c3 in some lines. However, after bishop b2 here, looks to me like white still has decent compensation for one pawn, once again, because of his two bishops on an open board. To play rook d1, which looks good, but it runs into a tactic which Levon Aronian does not miss. He has a little trick with knight takes e4. The point is after bishop e4, where it looks like black lost a piece, black unpins with tempo by going queen f6, attacking the rook on a1 and simultaneously attacking the bishop on e4. And this position is just horrible for white. He would have to go rook b1, d takes e4, let's say queen takes e4, but black is a pawn up and he's better because now white had to give his light square bishop, the defender of the white king, and such a position with opposite color bishops, <clears throat> it's very important that the king is safe. And here white is a pawn down and his king is worse so I believe this position is very close to winning for black, and I'm not surprised Topalov avoided it 
The problem for Topalov is he doesn't really have any good alternatives. The move he played is the move bishop b2, just kind of pretending as if nothing happened and continuing the game two pawns down. But two pawns are two pawns, especially since Aronian can quietly play queen e7, he can just ignore the threat. Well, the move bishop takes e4 followed by queen takes e4 because this leads to the same horrible position. Therefore, he has time to consolidate when two pawns should decide the issue. Topolov does his best to mix it, going b4, threatening b5 to chase his knight away, but Aronian just calmly plays a6, queen c2. Once again, this is not a threat, so Aronia goes f6, crippling this bishop on the long diagonal, quietly improving his position. Rook c1, you can see Topal is making normal moves, but the black position is way too solid not to be able to withstand <clears throat> the white army here because of the two extra pawns that black has. Rook ad8, once again, happy about bishop takes e4, and Topalov makes it very clear he's never gonna do that. He plays bishop f1, introducing some ideas of bishop takes a6 in some lines, but it's not really a threat yet, as Aronian shows by just going rook d7, because bishop a6 can be very strongly met with yet another Zwischen Zug. Knight takes b4, a takes b4, b takes a6, and black is two pawns up and winning. <clears throat> The game f3 was played, chasing this knight back to d6. Pretty good square for a 2 though. Rook e1, trying to create some disharmony in the black camp. But black's moves are all kind of simple. Queen f7, stepping out of the pin. Bishop to d3, next attempt targeting h7. Black could play g6 here, but Aronian probably didn't even want to have to think about positions like this one, even though it seems to be winning for black. He doesn't want these complications, and he plays a more energetic move the move g5, defending the pawn on h7 and forcing this knight back to g2, when, yeah, I'm at the risk of sounding like a broken record here. Two pawns is too much, white has some, has a nice little setup, but the two black extra pawns should decide the issue. And therefore, yeah, we're gonna speed up a little through the next couple moves. d4 was strong here, intending bishop d5. I only played knight c4 instead, very solid, trying to exchange one of the white bishops to get rid of the white bishop pair. That's what happens, f4, knight b2, queen b2. Kara is still needed with his weakened king, but Aronian does take it. He goes bishop h3, not forced by any stretch either. Topalov continues playing as if nothing happened, goes a4, preparing b5. <coughs> Aronian plays h6, <coughs> sorry. This move surprised me a little bit because it's slightly weakening the dark, the light squares around his king, but he probably wanted to go king, oops, not to g6, but to g7 and then be able to recapture on g5 with the h-pawn, should he need to. Once again, bishop a6, this has been possible for a couple moves, but it's never very tempting, is well met with knight takes b4. This is not an exception. After bishop e2, knight c6, let's say queen b7, white would win a pawn back, but black after knight d4 has two pass pawns in the center and active pieces, and once again, winning position. Set b5 was played, takes takes knight to e7, Queen to f2, knight to f5, queen to f3, Topalov is fishing for something, but there's not really anything there. King to g7, king to h1, and this is the last interesting moment, because here Aronian volunteers to return one pawn by going rook to e7. Wasn't forced, you can continue maneuvering, for example, knight d4, queen f2, knight b3 is a computer solution, but it's not very intuitive to send your knight on a journey to the middle of nowhere here. So Aronian said, says, you know what, you can have one pawn back if that helps us clarify the situation, I don't mind. Rook e7, white has to take, queen takes, because knight takes runs into rook c7, that's a pawn you really don't want to lose. So queen takes e7, and here Topalov had the chance to take on d5, which he refused to do. Probably he evaluated the position after rook d8 to be hopeless for him. He has to offer the exchange of queens with queen e4, and this endgame is pretty bad after rook d4 or rook d7. Let's say rook d7 takes, knight takes. Black is a pawn up with a very active position and should be winning. Still, I believe this gave Topolov better chances to prolong the fight and at least make Aronian show some technique. Instead, he played the move queen to h5, hoping for an attack, maybe on these light squares, first 
forcing black to give up his bishop for the knight, bishop g2, king g2. But this attack never really materializes because Ironian has the move knight e3 check, stepping out of the way, king g1, king h1 made no big difference, and Ironian goes for f5. So you can see by the computer evaluation, the computer is not that thrilled by f5, but I believe every human would have played this, just stopping knight g6 check. Computer loves the move knight to g4 here, fancy move, threatening queen e3 check, therefore white can't take on g4. And after queen g6, king h8, this knight does a pretty good job covering h6, while black is ready to launch a counterattack with queen e3 check, or first rook to g8, and the computer says this is just winning. But f5 is fine as well. This is in the time travel phase of move 38. You don't want any enemy queens in front of your king. Topalov plays queen to e2, but this retreat is pretty much equivalent to resigning the game. Maybe the last chance he could have taken, I don't think it would have saved him, but was to go for an exchange sacrifice. The move rook takes c7, and after queen c7, queen g5 check, king f7, queen takes e3. When white is no longer any pawns down, but he now is a bishop, has a bishop against the rook, so he is an exchange down, which should decide the issue as well. But black would still have to handle with some care because of his exposed king. Therefore, maybe this was the best chance, but I do not doubt that Aronian would have converted this advantage as well. Instead, queen e2 was played, but now Aronian consolidates very easily. Rook f6, queen b2, g f opening the g-file for potential counterplay, because now after king h7, there is always threats with queen g7 and rook g6. White is two pawns down with nothing at all to show for it. Queen g7, now the problem is after rook g6, of course, all endgames are hopeless. Therefore, Topalov decides to bring his queen away from this long diagonal, goes queen e2. Levon Aronian cements his knight on e3 by going d4, queen f3, last straw, attacking the b7 pawn. But Aronian is ready for it, has a very nice tactical solution. He goes c6, and his point is after bc, bc, rook c6. Now the black queen occupies a long diagonal, and this proves decisive. There is a pin. If you try to be creative and break it with bishop b5, black can just play caveman style. Queen takes b5, the point being rook takes f6, runs into queen b1 check, and all of a sudden white faces some very serious back rank issues. <laughs> Said Topalov tried a tree, probably trying to get rid of these back rank issues, but that leaves a new weakness in the white camp, the g3 square, and Aronian immediately targets it by going rook to g6, intending rook g3. Rook b1, nothing else worked either. Rook to g3, queen h5, attacking the pawn on f5, but Aronian has foreseen it all and he plays a nice move, queen d7, from where the queen does pretty much everything. Covers f5, stops rook b7, and is ready to join his own attack by going queen d5 check, a move that is very, very hard to stop and will decide the game instantly. Topalov tried king h2, rook g2 check, king h1, and now the queen goes to d5, which smells like checkmate. This rook only has to go anywhere, and next move, queen g2 checkmate. Rook b7 check doesn't really help because black has a little counter check. Rook g7 is check and next move would be queen g2 mate or the move after next. Therefore Topalov decided to resign after queen d5. Not too early, it is hopelessly lost. He would be checkmated in very few moves. Tough loss for Veselin Topalov. Took 50 moves but the outcome was more or less decided I believe after 17 rook d1, knight takes e4. Because of this trick, bishop e4, queen f6, Topalov faced an uphill struggle from here. And you can't expect to be two pawns down against a player of the class of Levin Aronian and not to lose the game. So that is what happened. And his second loss already, it does not look good for the former world champion in this tournament. We're gonna look at the standings now. If you don't wanna see them, switch off the video. If you wanna check out the other games first, but in the standings, we will see that Levan Aronian with his win joins Vichy Anand and Sege Kayakin in the lead, all on two out of three, plus one, as we call it in chess lingo. While no one else has yet won a game, 
Peter Swidler came very close against Hikaru Nakamura, but could not convert his advantage. And Topalov and Nakamura have not really found their touch yet in this tournament. There's still 11 rounds to play, so anything can happen. But it does not look good for Nakamura and Topalov so far. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.